They wanted to raise $1,000 for the senior class to go to the Oregon coast for their graduation trip. And they were asking if anybody had any projects or jobs in which they could come and earn $1,000. That was my first entrepreneurial idea. You promote your people succeeding. Your people promote you, the person that helped them succeed. And you get this multiplier effect. And that's the true value of leadership, is when you can amplify and multiply impact through hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands or tens of thousands of people. That's how you get it figured out. And that's how you actually create a life through your business. Now, if it sounds hard, it's because it is. It's a big commitment. I'm gonna walk you through how you do it. But the question is, where did I learn this? You know, you might be thinking, oh, Brandon Dawson, he's got all this experience. He probably has this fancy college education on how to grow and scale and probably went to some, got an MBA somewhere. And he might be thinking that, and I'll tell you, it's just emphatically not true. In fact, I barely got out of high school. I was a 2.4 GPA because they were gracious because they really didn't want me back there the next year. So they passed me out of a science class that I probably should have failed. But you know what? I hated school. I was no good in it. I went to college for a few months. I realized it was not a place for me and I decided to move from Portland, Oregon to Atlanta. But before that, I've got an interesting story. And here's the thing about reference points, because this story created a reference point. It created a, something that I never forgot about. And sometimes you need to lean into those reference points, those things that happen in life that looking back in reflection, you're like, boy, that imprinted me. And for me, it was the walnut orchard. You see, I was a junior in high school. I had football practice, I had school, and I worked at the night deposit, bussing dishes and cleaning up the kitchen because I needed to earn enough money to buy my gas and buy my cleats and do things like that. So I was a pretty good worker, I was always committed, but the other thing, the other attraction I had was a girl that was going to Oregon State University. And so what was happening is I started breaking curfew because I was trying to sneak over to see her. My parents, they grounded me. They were going out of town for a week, I had football practice, so they said as part of my grounding, I needed to pick the walnut orchard. Now see, the walnut orchard, five acres, six acres, every year we needed to generate $5,500 in sales. Now I'll be honest with you, I hated this. It made my hands all stained, and especially during football season because I was a running back and I was a cornerback, and so I always had my hands out and all my friends would make fun of me. So I set off to go to school on a Friday morning, they set off to go out of town, and all I could think about, see motivation and inspiration is important. You need to help people pick what is the thing that motivates and inspires them the most. That is another reference point. For me, it was how do I get this job done so I can go over and see my girlfriend? Well, I went to school Friday morning and on the locker, senior lockers, they had notes taped everywhere saying senior fund drive. They wanted to raise $1,000 for the senior class to go to the Oregon coast for their graduation trip. And they were asking if anybody had any projects or jobs in which they could come and earn $1,000. That was my first entrepreneurial idea. I went up to the class, the senior, and, the, and he was a friend of mine, on the captain of the football team. And I said, hey, I have an idea. Why don't you and some of the football players come over and some of the senior classmates come over, we'll pick walnuts. And if you help me pick enough walnuts and help me sell them, then I'll give you some money. Now, I didn't know how much I could give them, but I just made that promise. And that next morning, Saturday morning, I'm sitting there, I'm pulling the wheelbarrows out, and I'm hoping. It's, it's drizzling, it's miserable, and I'm just hoping, man, I hope somebody shows up. I wanna get this done so I can go see my girlfriend. And all of a sudden, the first car came, the second car came, and then multiple people were getting out of the cars. So the senior class had only 35 kids in it as well. And all of a sudden, they're bringing their friends and they're bringing their family and they're bringing their brothers and they're bringing their sisters. I had an army show up at this orchard. For the first time in my life, all I did was direct people. I drove around on the tractor and had them throw the husks and had them throw the branches and had them throw everything in the tractor. I had them load the walnuts and took them over to the dryers. I had people offloading them and sticking them in the dryers. I learned something in that moment at the walnut orchard. They didn't come out there to help me. They came out to earn the $1,000. And the other thing in reflection I learned is people will do things you hate to do if there's a benefit in it for them. Those people brought their family members. Their family members didn't come out because they were excited about picking up walnuts. The family came out to show their kids that they loved them before they graduated and left home. Sometimes the very thing that you hate can create life for other people. So instead of hating something, figure out what kind of life that can create for other people and promote that. So what did I learn with these walnut orchard? One, people will do things that you hate if it creates an opportunity or advantage or life for them. Second, the more people you throw at a problem, faster it gets done. Third, 
price is only an issue in the absence of value. When it was all said and done, I made almost $9,000. I paid the team $1,000. I had $8,000 at home. The senior class was thrilled. I was a local hero at the school. The orchard was phenomenal and clean and pristine, and I picked up quite a few days with the girlfriend. But I learned a lot from the walnuts, and I guess the question I would ask you is if you look back in reflection at things that maybe you didn't even pinpoint at that point in time impacted your life, and you reflected on something that you did, a decision you made, an action you took that turned out good, how could you replicate that through all aspects of your life? So for me, those walnuts taught me a lot. And the other thing is, is that today when we talk about helping your team members set their personal, professional, financial goals and showing them how to accomplish it through the business, I still reflect on those dumb walnuts and the fact that all those parents and all those people came out and they spent money and they didn't even care how much it cost because the point wasn't that they wanted the walnuts or they wanted to pick them up. The point was they were demonstrating to their kids that they were important and they loved them. I guess I would ask each of you when you're marketing your company or you're marketing for people to join your team, are you focused on the things that will bring life and bring value to them or are you fixated on the things that you don't like about your business?